Now it is my pleasure to <coughs> invite the very wonderful and the extremely tall Tim Turnbull to the stage. <laughs> It's Martin in the house, Martin around the cooper. There he is. Wrong glasses on it, Martin. Um, this, 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 I'm going to read two poems that are set in the Tate Valley. Um, and this one contains, is, was its part, in part inspired by um, one of the best jokes I've ever heard, which was Martin's. Well, if it's stuck with, stuck with you 15 years, um, we were just standing having a beer in the in the lane and our neighbour Gavin was spraying thistles and Martin went, What's he doing? That's the national flower. That's <laughs> just So he gets a mention. Um, but our 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 neighbour um, complained about the jets, the tornado fighter jet fighter bombers going down the valley and uh, to the Ministry of Defence and thereafter they turned left to our houses and came straight over the top. <laughs> the great be empty. Fighter jets hurl themselves down the valley then bank and careen up over the spruce clad ridge. They thunder above the wee white house designated a quarry for this exercise the wee white house whence emanate all those indignant missives to min of death regarding flight path nuisance and think of the children. I'm at my wit's end. But what jolly japes for bored and nervy pilots whom will soon be enough be pounding the stockades and mountain hideouts of her suit despots now grinding teeth wetting scimitars and plotting what new outrage and the wee white wooden house rattles in the turbulent wake and the smallest girl erupts in tearful fearful hysterics while out in the meadow the trefoils vetches yarrow cranes bill and the national flour sway gently in the afterburners fading raw <laughs> <laughs> and this was written after the floods, um, after the last time the Tay flood, the floods, which floods? <laughs> Happy times, old man. I have cut myself chopping kindling in the wrong glasses. A flap of skin oozes crimson, drops spill onto the sycamore block. The valley is saturated. The tear roils, red with iron from sodden moor. Fields erupt with ghost rivers and lakes. Swans glide where sheep should be. Everything is upside down. The orchard is surprised to see itself. Half salmon repose on flood banks, hanging trees. A heron, spoilt for choice, aerial surveys the terrain. I carry on splitting billets, <coughs> relishing the metallic ping as each stick cleaves, then rattles <coughs> as it's tossed into the ash-stained galvanised bucket. A steady dribble of blood stains the logs on the top of the wood pile. Last summer's beech and oak, specks and spots fall on cotton sweatpants, on the bark and sawdust, on the earth, the vegetable beds await attention. In three or four weeks, the soil will be turned enriched by compost from the bins behind the shed. We look, the weather will improve and seeds be sown, kale, cabbages, peas, beans and beets before April's out. Spits of blood dry black on the creamy, tight-grained face of exposed heartwood and smear the face of the rusty billhook. None of this matters. But more important by far is that it doesn't matter, that it doesn't matter. It's time to light the fire. Thank you.